activist, anchor artist, model, singer, and motivation speaker. Miss Riyavi of 70 is going to declare the speech of Muni Pamasari. They see my disability, I see my ability. They call me disabled, I call myself differently abled. There are some incidents that happen in your life. Those incidents break you, deform you, but they mold into the best version of you. And the same thing happened to me. I was 18 years old when I got married. My father wanted me to get married. And all I said was, if that makes you happy, I'll say yes. And of course, we never had a marriage. Just about two years of getting married, I'm in a car accident. Somehow my husband fell asleep in the car full of ditch. He managed to jump out, save himself, I'm happy for him. But I stayed inside the car and I sustained a lot of injuries. The list is a bit long, don't get scared. The wrist was fractured, shoulder bone and collarbone were fractured. My old ribcage got fractured. And because of the ribcage injury, my lungs and liver were badly injured. I couldn't breathe. I lost urinal bubble control. That's why I had to wear this bag wherever I go. Three vertebrae of my backbone were completely crushed and I got paralyzed for the rest of my life. I finally ended up in a hospital where I stayed for two and a half months. I underwent multiple surgeries. One day, a doctor came to me and said, well, I heard that you wanted to be an artist, but you ended up being a housewife. I have bad news for you. You won't be able to paint again because if your wrist and arm are so deformed, you won't be able to hold pen again. Next day, the doctor came to me and said, Your spine injury is so bad, you won't be able to walk again. Because of your spine injury and the fixation that you have on your back, you won't be able to give birth to a child. That day, I was devastated. I asked my mother, why me? And that is where I started to question my existence, that why am I even alive? And that is where I realized that words have the power to heal the soul. My mother said to me, this too shall pass. God has a greater plan for you. I don't know what is it, but he surely has. And in all those distress and grief, or somehow other those words were magical, they kept me going. One day I asked my brothers, I know I have a deformed hand, but I'm tired of looking at these white walls and wearing these white scrubs. I'm getting tired of this. I want to add more colors to my life. I want to do something. Bring me some colors. Bring me a small canvas. I want to paint. So the very first painting I made was on my deathbed, where I painted for the very first time. It was not just an art piece or just my passion. It was my therapy. And then I was discharged and I went back home. And I went back home and I realized that I had developed a lot of pressure on cells on my back and on my hip bone. I was unable to sit. There were a lot of infections in my body, a lot of allergies. So doctors wanted me to lie down in the bed straight. For not six months, for not one year, two years, I was bedridden. Confined in that one room, looking outside the window, listening to the birds chirping and thinking maybe there will be a time you'll be going out with the family and enjoying the nature. That was a time where I realized how lucky people are. That is a time where I realized that day I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna share this pain with everyone to make them realize how blessed they are, but they don't consider themselves lucky. That day I decided that I'm gonna fight my fears. We all have fears, fear of unknown, fear of losing people, fear of losing health, money, we want to learn career, we are not famous, we are scared all the time. So I wrote down all those fears one by one and I decided to overcome these fears one at a time. Thank you.